So we're going to talk a little bit about transient visual loss. Um, let's just start by defining what it is. So it's a sudden loss of visual function. It could be partial or complete uh, in one or both eyes. However, it lasts less than 24 hours. So that's the key right there. Most common cause of monocular transient vision loss is retinal schema due to carotid, uh, carotid artery disease. And the most common cause of binocular transient visual loss is migraine. Just remember that. And as you always hear, you know, Dr. Uh, Degree and Warren are always belabor at this point about obtaining a good history. This is the key to making the diagnosis. This is not like, you know, it's not just in neuro-ophthalmology, but it's also in uveitis and a lot of the more complicated uh, subspecialties. But the history is very, very important. It's alive and well in ophthalmology. So a little bit about the, um, some key points when you're taking the history. Monocular versus binocular visual loss, um, it helps to localize the lesion. Typically, if it's a monocular issue, you always think about a lesion that's, uh, that's uh, pre-chiasmal. And if it's binocular, think about chiasmal or retrochiasmal. You should also be aware that you know, when patients experience a transient homonymous hemianopia, they a lot of times describe it as monocular vision loss. However, um, it's in, usually in the eye where it, that has the, or is experiencing the temporal deficit, okay? so. Keep that in mind. Age is also important. Typically, if they're younger than 50 years old, uh, think a lot of, you know, think horses, not zebras, so migraine, uh, vasospasm. However, in pregnant women, you should always consider the uh, diagnosis of eclampsia. This typically occurs, you know, right around the, times, uh, the time of delivery, and it's, uh, it's due to a more serious, serious pathogenic cause, uh, something known as vasogenic edema, you know, edema of the uh, occipital cortex. So remember that. Older than 50 years old, think about cerebrovascular disease or giant cell arteritis, typically if they're even, you know, even older than like 60. All right, so duration of vision loss is actually very important as well. So if it's lasting seconds and it's uh, associated with changes in posture, think about optic disc drusen or papilledema. Uh, if it's monocular lasting several minutes but no more than 15, think about ipsilateral internal carotid artery stenosis. Uh, if it's binocular lasting 20 to 30 minutes uh, with scintillating scotomas, you would, everybody in this room would think about migraines. Uh, however, retinal artery spasm, this is something I wasn't really familiar with, but this can present, I mean, this is kind of, it kind of throws, you know, a curveball in your diagnosis or your differential because it can last from seconds to an hour as well. So this is something to consider. Here's a good um, chart thinking about you know, your differential depending on how long the vision loss lasts. And I can send you guys this slide afterwards. It can help you when you're seeing patients with vision loss. But it typically happens for you know, a couple of seconds. Um, think about tear film abnormalities, papilledema, optic nerve hedges, and what we spoke about. Uh, some uh, not congenital anomalies uh, of the uh, disc. Um, think about a large PVD, especially if it moves with the eye movement as well as gaze evoked amaurosis. Uh, does anybody know what that is? Chris? I'll talk about it. Oh, you'll talk about it? Perfect, perfect, okay. And then minutes, um, I don't wanna steal any thunder from Eileen or Julia, but uh, a lot of the vasculopathic causes, um, you, you should think about that, hypercoagulable conditions, cardiac abnormalities, UTOPS phenomenon, I don't know if either of you are gonna be covering, you won't be covering that, okay, great. Pattern of visual loss and recovery is also important. Um, monocular descending curtain, tunnel-like constriction, sudden loss of vision, uh, think about retinal emboli, uh, altitudinal aspect of visual loss, think about carotid artery disease, vasospasm, or NAION, it's classically, you can see it in, uh, as well as vision loss precipitated by exercise, think about vasospasm and demyelinating disease, and I mean, Julia said that she's going to elaborate a little bit more about Udhoff's phenomenon, but this is typically seen in patients with a demyelinating disease where they get transient visual blurring with activity or elevation of their body temperature. A little bit more, uh, you should always think about the posterior circulation, uh, particularly ischemia occurring there. Um, when they have complete simultaneous bilateral visual loss or homonymous hemianopia. And this is something I didn't know either, was that binocular visual disturbance that's described with a geometric quality, typically this hexagonal uh, chicken wire pattern, think of a, uh, occipital lobe dysfunction. Some associated symptoms and additional signs, 
positive visual phenomena associated with the headache is the classic migraine. If you have persistent headache with intracranial no noises like a pulsatile tinnitus, you know, you always think about increased intracranial pressure. Um, GCA, you, everybody probably had this beaten in their, into their heads about scalp tenderness, um, jaw claudication, headache, weight, weight loss, fever, you know, a lot of the other constitutional symptoms. You also get loss of consciousness associated with dizziness, diplopia, dysarthria, a lot of the uh, bulbar uh, symptoms. Think about global perfusion problems, typically uh, affecting the brain stem or the cortex. And the skin and joint changes, Raynaud's phenomenon, think about coll collagen vascular diseases as well. Some pertinent points that you want to pick up from the past medical history. Uh, ask about vasculopathic risk factors, hypertension, diabetes, hyperlipidemia, and carotid stenosis, uh, hypercoagulable risk factors, uh, their migraine history, their smoking history, seeing if there's increased risk for clots, right? uh, recent surgery, their medication history, typically, um, more importantly, their oral contraceptive pills or hormone replacement therapy which makes them more coagulopathic. Um, IV drug use, recent trauma, any congenital heart defects or acquired heart defects, as well as demyelinating diseases. Examination, as many of you have already gone through the neuro-ophthalmology rotation, you always want to do a full exam most of the time. Most of the time, you guys are probably going to see the patients uh, in the ED, so just check everything. So. Um, from their visual acuity, their field to extraocular movements. Um, that, uh, Dr. Bird's going to talk a little bit more about the gaze of amaurosis and the significance of that, but that's also important as well. Uh, any abnormalities in movements is important as well. Color vision, pupils, DFE, and the photo stress recovery test. Does anybody, can anybody tell me, Chris, can you tell me what the photo stress recovery test is? Yeah, so you basically pull the lights um, for a certain amount of time see how quickly vision recovers. Um, it should be like 10 to 15 seconds. 45 seconds. Yeah. What's the cutoff for? So what, is, what does it help you distinguish? So whether that's like a retina pathology, like macular pathology versus like optic nerve. Yeah. And the cutoff, do you know for uh, if it's a macular or a retina problem? Is? 90 seconds, typically 90. If it's more than 90 seconds, you think more of a retina pathology. So examination, um, here's a good chart. Think about differential depending on your examination findings. So if you have a normal ocular or neuroophthalmic exam, think migraine, intravascular embolus um, that's already cleared, retinal arterial vasospasm, or retinal optic nerve hypoperfusion due to systemic hypotension. You know, the thing that I, I did not know about with retinal vasospasm is that if there's an acute episode and you actually look at their fundus, you can see retinal arterial constriction. Is that true, Dr. Degree? Have you ever seen that? Yeah, I have noticed. Oh, perfect. Great. <laughs> so we won't have to talk about that good. Um, Sorry. And, no, no, no. I mean, that's why, I mean, my, my part was just an overview, yeah. so I didn't want to steal anybody's thunder. Um, and then, yeah, so I'm not going to go into these, uh, these other findings because I think Julia is going to talk about that. And these are just some common non-vascular ocular causes of, um, of vision loss, so tear film abnormalities, corneal disease, recurrent hyphemas. Something I also thought about was like UV entities as well, something you should think about. Angle closure glaucoma, vitreous debris, macular disease, and a lot of the uh, optic nerve problems that we already kind of covered at this point. So just a quick quiz. Uh, and then I just want to say something about, because um, this will be the only time you cover the ocular causes. Mm -hmm. um, yesterday in clinic, we had um, a, a woman with numerous complaints and numerous types of ocular visual loss. Mm -hmm. but, but her most the common one, in monocular and binocular, the tear film, don't, don't discount tear film because it's really very common. Okay. All right. Everybody done? Yes. Next one.
Everybody ready with that one? And lastly. All right, everybody done? Got those? All right, so question number one. What is it? You can call it out, anybody? Yep, that's fine. Number two. Awesome. Dry eyes. <laughs> well, I have to say, it's a pretty comment, but it, it, these are, the, the way you have to distinguish it, like that woman, I said, could you, it, you she goes, well, it's blurred. I said, but could you see print, you know, through this blur? And yes, she could. It was, you know, but I have to say, it's it's so common. Mm -hmm. And I've seen people get worked up for, um, you know, like carotid because when they have just dry eyes. Dry eyes. Yeah. And Utah's phenomenon. Someone tell me what that is. Absolutely perfect. And last but not least. Curtain. Call them out. Curtain over tunnel area vision. vision. Good. Tunnel vision. Good. And last. Yeah. Good.